Hey, this is Mr. Mitchell with a video on work, machines, and mechanical advantages. They all tie together. Now, when we think of work, we think of the chores that we might do or have done in the past at our house. We might think of the career that we might have and the money that comes from it. But scientifically, work has more to do with force and less to do with chores and with money made. Work has to do with force, and you can see the different the formula below here, that it's force times distance. Literally, work is done when a force moves something over any distance. And you know, forces can happen <coughs> all the time. I mean, you're having force just lifting up your pencil, you're having force uh, just walking from one place to the next. So work is done at all of these places if you have some kind of distance that this force is being used on. Uh, so we have calculated force before. Uh, we had force equals mass times acceleration, which was force was in newtons, mass was in kilograms, acceleration was meters per second squared. But once we calculate that, we simply put it in this formula and multiply times distance, and distance is going to be in meters. So instead of saying work is going to be in newtons times meters, we call that a joule, uh, J-O-U-L-E. A joule is the, uh, I guess you'd call it the standard unit for work, and it equals one newton meter, newton times meter. So let's take a look at an example of somebody doing some work. Here we have this woman who is pushing a sofa. So when she pushes the sofa, work is done once she is able to move that sofa any distance. If she had struggled, say the sofa was just too heavy and she couldn't move it at all, you cannot calculate these because you have to have acceleration. You have to have a distance something is moved to even have acceleration. But let's just put in some numbers here. So let's look at the, uh, let's figure out force first. If the sofa weighs about 150 kilograms, that's around the ballpark of uh, 325 or 330 pounds. So I just randomly picked a number for that that seemed pretty close. And let's say her acceleration of moving, and it's pretty slow because, well, it weighs 150 kilograms, is, uh, let's say her acceleration is 0.5 meters per second squared. So you simply just multiply those together. 150 times 0.5 is going to be 75, and remember that is going to be in newtons. So from there, from there it's pretty simple, because anytime you have acceleration of some kind of object, in this case she accelerated the sofa, anytime you have acceleration you're probably going to have some distance that it went. So you just put in force, 75 newtons, and I made up that she put, pushed it five meters, which is, uh, oh, about 17 or 18 feet. So just simply multiply that together, and you can see that she had, there was 375 joules of work that was done. She exerted a force of 75 newtons, and the amount of work that was done was calculated into 375 joules. So yes, this can be calculated with almost anything that is moved because you have to have some kind of acceleration to move it from a standing still anyway. So this kind of leads us into machines. Machines help us with work. Sure, we can do lots of work by ourselves, but if that sofa was just too heavy, we would have to have some kind of simple or compound machine to kind of help it move for us. Machines change the direction of the force or they change the speed of uh, the force and they are able to help us with stuff. And wow, we have a lot of cool machines in our world. Sewing machines, washing machines, exercise machines, coffee maker machines, and even vending machines, one of my favorites. But every machine is not going to be very efficient. There, you're not going to find a machine where you get out of it the work that is put into it. Now, fortunately, most of these machines run on electricity. For example, this coffee machine here, you have electricity which is going into it. 
So even if you don't get 100% of the energy that goes into it, out of it, you still are able to uh, get your coffee without you having to do all the work there. So keep in mind that you have none of the machines will end up being 100% efficient. Now why? Uh, mostly it has to do with friction. I mean, with every one of these machines, there is friction which slows it down. Uh, and that's going to be the case with everything. So if you have a frictionless place, then it would be close to 100%. But it's just not. And you think of an automobile, you have things to help make it more frictionless, kind of like the oil in your car that makes sure things are moving smoothly, but still it can't make it 100% efficient. So these simple machines and compound machines help with direction and speed. And of course it's worth having them. It's just they're not gonna be 100% efficient. Now we can kind of rank machines as far as how efficient they are or how effective they are. Uh, mechanical advantage is how you rank a machine. Now I say the word rank, rank might not be the right way to go at it. it it's just a measure of effectiveness. Sure, you can have one that doesn't that's mechanical advantage is fairly low, but it still would help with the certain situation. So roughly, so I can tell you a little bit about mechanical advantage, the higher, the higher the number, the more efficient the machine. And let's compare this simple machine first. We have ramp A and we have ramp B. Ramp A is a longer ramp. It's the same height, both of them are two meters, but it is a longer ramp. The mechanical advantage of a ramp or lever is discovered by doing long side or, or length over height. I guess it would be the angled length, you might say. So here it's 6 over 2, which is 3. And here it's 3 over 2, which is 1.5. So which one is the most effective machine? It would be this one because it is higher. Now, you get into some machines that we use, some of those machines... Uh, like on this page and the mechanical advantage is going to be way higher than 1.5 or 3. Uh, the simple machines, however, are probably going to be pretty low like that. But still, a ramp is better to use than you lifting a washing machine by yourself. This ramp is going to be effective. Even this ramp would be somewhat effective. I mean, if you could just get it up to the uh, level that you need to, then this ramp would be more effective than just pulling it up yourself. Now, mechanical advantage is is calculated differently uh, depending upon what the uh, simple machine is. Here, you can't see the numbers very well, but you have a fulcrum right here and you have a lever right here. This long side is calculated over the short side, and you might not see the numbers, but it's 2.5 over one, so that'll make it 2.5. For a wedge, Believe it or not, this little bitty length, this angle of the slope here, is calculated over the diameter of the nail here. So that makes the uh, mechanical advantage a two. So there's lots of different ways that you can discover a mechanical advantage. Uh, even something that's like a pulley, this is kind of funny to me, that you don't even put numbers in. You just count the ropes besides the one that you are pulling. So for this kind of pulley setup, it is just one. Now I mentioned that the higher the number, the better. This one here doesn't change the amount of force that has to be used. It just uses a different angle. And even though something has a low one like a one, then it could still be helpful. This one has count the ropes, one, two. This one has count the ropes, one, two, three. This one has count the ropes, one, two, three, four. So these are some of the basics of work, machines, and mechanical advantage. And we're going to expound a little bit more, or I guess more will apply these basics uh, in our class. So I hope you have learned a little bit about these things. Thank you.